and welcome back to Space Explorers for part two, the bonus Q&A section, all about Call of Duty Infinite Warfare with Dr. Matt Balm. Hi. And me, and Cam. Cam. I'm still here. Yes, we have all of your questions that you've asked on YouTube and Twitter, and we're going to jump straight in. As we said, all about uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and just space in general and everything that Dr. Matt Balm does as well. So yeah. Now, if you haven't watched the first video, though, mm. that's on the channel right now. We yes. actually played through the different sections of the game. We went to Europa. We were in near-Earth orbit. We even ran around on the outside of a spacecraft. What a wonderful awesome. time we had, Matt. It, it was brutal. Wasn't it wonderful? Brutal it, it was. was. And all so realistic. I yep. know. All so realistic. <laughs> but you guys gave us loads of questions in the initial announcement video we gave up on YouTube, so let's have the first one of those now. Set. Perfect. We'd love to. The first question from, comes from a, uh, a lovely chap by the name of Brick Guy. Brick, says, guy. Brick guy. Hi, Brick Guy. Is he a man <laughs> made of bricks? Yes, he is a, a master builder man. Uh, he says, what happens if you shoot a laser in space? Does that push you back? It makes the sounds pew 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 pew. Um, it, makes, it makes no sound and it does push you back a very, very tiny bit. It does. Yeah, kind of. Do, uh, you mean mathematically it must push you back. Yeah. But if you if you had like a little laser pen and you held it on for forever, would you get faster and faster? Forever. <laughs> Oh. I mean, you know, we're talking. I'm just a geologist. Relatively. You need a physicist. It's just geological ask. time. In geological <laughs> yes. time, if you held it down, <laughs> you've totally, you totally baffled me. Uh, yeah, I'll say yes. Yes. Because infinite, infinity is a big thing. It, it is. So well, infinite you, warfare, you yeah. might say. Yeah. Uh, Justin Flugel says, if you fire a bullet in space, will it keep accelerating? Or would it stay at the same velocity? Uh, it, it will not keep accelerating because no. it's got nothing's putting a force on it apart mm. from perhaps slowing it down. Tiny, tiny, weeny little particles of dust or maybe you know the occasional atom of hydrogen or something would impact into it. So mm -hmm. it potentially would slow down eventually. Would it be possible to shoot yourself if you fired the bullet perfectly into the, you know, the, the orbit? The, the orbit of mm. the Earth. And it could it orbit around the Earth and then hit into you. If I'll, you in the I'll same say place. yes, it is possible. That is possible. Great. Very, okay. very, very. That's very probably unlikely. how I'd actually <laughs> accidentally wind up shooting myself in space wherever. If you there. had a very small black hole, you might be able to get it to orbit around it. All right. Shoot, it comes no. straight back. Well, like slingshot it, so it comes back even yeah. faster than it went. <laughs> Maybe, but Brilliant. on the other hand, you might also just be torn apart by the gravity. Wow. Sort of difference by the black hole. So be spaghettified. You know, six and two threes at that point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Next one is uh, Wintastic, who says. What's on the other side of a black hole? Oh, good question. Oh, that was a good lead-in. <laughs> yeah. Um, you did that all on your own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. He, to do with me. he says, applauding himself. I, yeah. think, I think if you've if you've watched Interstellar, <laughs> yeah. that's about as good a bet it's as a bookcase, anyone right? knows. You know? It's a bookcase. Mm -hmm. Divide by the power of love. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Who knows? No so one knows. Nobody so knows. Um, um, we're never going to find out because we'll just get torn to pieces if we go near it. Um, I've got a question that I'm going to sort of append onto this. All right. Um, everyone says physics breaks down in a black hole, what does physics breaks down mean? I think like, the, the point is that you get to a point of essentially infinite density. All right. An infinite density, I like, if you can imagine infinite anything, then you're a better man than I am. You can because imagine I can't infinite, imagine infinite anything. We, we played infinite warfare earlier. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was right, right here. We can, we can imagine <laughs> infinite warfare. But yeah, all right. I mean, literally <laughs> infinite. Um, I guess you get to the point where there is like infinite density. That's like, that's like impossible for anything, anything really to be described in there. So Physics just breaks down. <laughs> uh, Axiom Bias says, my question is, do you actually think that Elon Musk will be able to get people to Mars in 10 years? No. No. I don't Wh think why that. Why not? Why not? Oh, it's really hard, and it takes loads and loads of money, and, you know, he's done amazing things, and his company's done really, really amazing things. Mm. But, I mean, maybe you could get people to Mars, but getting them back again? I don't know. Is he mm. going to get people back in, or is he just going to orbit them? I can't well, remember I mean, whether uh, that was his the, first plan. or whether that I think was his first plan was to send else. them there and then... Orbit. I'm looking at Lewis, who's off camera, and yeah. then send them around and then bring them back. We need a fact check. Sort of look at it and go. That was the initial. That was the initial. Just do as like as a flyby with cameras. And well, that, that's probably right. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think one of the, the cool things you could do with, a, with an orbit, people in orbit, is they could control a rover mm. on the surface remotely, mm. and then then it would just be so much better. Because the problem is at the moment you have to send commands to a rover, mm -hmm. wait you know minutes for it to get them, wait minutes for it to get. So you can't control it like a computer game. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise you know you're driving forward and there's a big hole, and by the time yeah. you know there's a hole, you're in it. Whereas yeah, if, you, so. if you had it, somebody in orbit, they could perhaps control it. So is that why the rovers have to all travel quite so slowly, just on the off chance that they're going to run into something? You've got the the time to Earth and the time back again to say, hey, easy. Yeah, well, essentially, you know, you've also got some limited amount of artificial intelligence. So that's got a you know a rover can't have a like a 
a huge ass kicking PC like you've got here playing. You have one. It's a really big one. <laughs> and um, so they've got to be able to detect if they're coming next to obstacles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so they go pretty slowly because they can't. You know, it also it takes a lot of energy to go fast. Mm -hmm. It just makes a lot of sense to go slowly. There's mm -hmm. no need to go fast. There's so. a lot of miles left to explore, so no, no need yeah, to rush. There is. All right. So it's all uh, really interesting. Yes. So. Next one is uh, Lexi Mize, who says, Calcium perchlorate, a toxin in the Martian soil. How will colonists deal with it? Mm. Wow, this is a very good one. Finally. Yeah, well, um, it's, it's not there in a very, very high concentration. Okay. So, um, but to be honest, I mean, the, the, the Martian colonists will have to cope with all sorts of toxins, you know, very fine dust in the, you know, getting into the space station or habitat or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, you know, we'll just have to find ways to deal with these things, either filters or, you know, something to, you know, to to react with that mm -hmm. oxidizer to remove it. So, um, you know, there's, yeah, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. So, and there's no guarantee that it's going to be possible with the budget we set ourselves. If you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Part of your job, right, is to map Mars yep. and to yep. figure out where we should be sending rovers. Yeah. But what if you know Elon Musk came to you and said, "Look, look, Matt." Yeah. Matty, buddy, good, good buddy pal. Um, Elon Musk. I can't be bothered like planning that. any yeah, of this. Yeah. All right, I can't be bothered planning this Mars mission. <laughs> I've, I've already sent people; they're on their way, and I haven't decided where we're landing. All right, you got to tell me today where we're going to land them. Where would you land me, people on Mars? Yeah. Do you have an idea, a place in mind that you think would be good? Um, it depends what they want to do. I mean, if uh, if you survive, want to stay alive. Survive. If you're going to survive, you probably want to go somewhere where there's a big hole in the ground. Easier to build a habitat. Easier to be protected from the Martian atmosphere. So. Mm -hmm. A cave, there's quite a few little impact craters where the meteorite has landed, made a hole in the ground. That appears to have punctured the surface into a void below, so a cave yeah, below. Okay, okay. So you could put like a little glass dome over or something, perspex, oh, perspex nice. dome. Um, but you also need somewhere that's got ice because you're going to need water. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be too near the equator. You want to be north or south. Okay. There Perfect. you go. Uh, there was actually a, a short question from Bitfallen. It's not really a question. It just says, say hi to Dr. Martin. Before. All right. Hi. Hi, Bitfallen. Hi. Wave as well. Miss you. Uh, TMT Industries says, My question, is space travel, as we see in games like Infinite Warfare, even a possibility within our lifetime? Or is it just a fun, cool sci-fi trope? Well, travelling to around the solar system mm -hmm. I guess, is possible. I mean, we do, we do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes a long time, but essentially you just need some kind of um, more efficient form of rocket power or propulsion. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have efficient forms of propulsion. They just have very, very small amounts of thrust. So they just, you know, they can be efficient, so, as in they can get up to a high speed. They just take a long time to get there. Yeah. Or we can have inefficient, like rockets, get us to a fast speed, you know, quickly, but, you know, it's really heavy, that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. So it's hard to say. I think we need to sort other problems out first, like how to get huge amounts of power concentrated in one place. So I don't know, maybe that's fusion power or something like that. Okay. Our lifetimes, ooh, I think that would be pushing it. All right, uh, Junko uh, Takuchi says, in the trailer they used a grappling hook to pull a player in place. Wouldn't they smash into each other? I think you guys would have seen this as well when yeah, you were playing yeah, through. Yeah. Wouldn't they smash into each other rather than one person being pulled in and the other one standing perfectly still? If one was standing in space and mm. the other was also standing in space and they grappled each other, they would both go in like that. Ah, well, what yes, if they, so. they aligned not perfectly together? Would they just then spin for all eternity? <laughs> Well, not for all eternity. You know, they, they, they would go round and round and round. They, they would lose um, energy and friction and stuff as their suits heated up and uh, things okay. like that. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You got to you got to remember that in space, you don't ha you're not in a on anything stable. So anything mm. you do has an equal and opposite reaction. So you, you throw something that way, you go back this way. Yeah, he's right. This that way. does happen in the game. If you if you grapple uh, an enemy, mm -hmm. they come to you rather yeah. than you. Oh, do you not move to them, well. to them at all? Not at all. Wow. Uh, there you go. Science. Are there any other low Earth orbit launch techniques being examined aside from the 800 year old light the fuse and run like hell technique now mm. employed? Brackets, rockets. And no, I'm not talking about some nonsense space elevator idea. More along the lines of a Star Tram type oh, stuff. Well, there was a space elevator in the. Uh, yeah, and space yes. elevators are really cool and practically, yeah. um, you know, I think they work pretty well. Yeah. But um, there are there are people doing research into things like um, sort of uh, laser technologies, essentially to sort of either thrust the spacecraft upwards using laser power or to uh, sort of ignite sort of fuel. Basically, then you have the majority of the 
energy required is on the Earth in the form okay. of a giant laser. So you're not wasting energy sending heavy exactly. things back up. Space. So yeah, if, if you have, if you have all your energy source on the ground, that's mm-hmm. that's better. All your fuel. Um, the problem is, it's just like it's it's really hard to mm-hmm. imagine anything other than just big rockets. Yeah. Because I mean, you can make you know, you can do other things like um, ramjets and scramjets, which are basically like jet engines that work sort of higher. Mm-hmm. So um, you know that that would work, but um, again, it's it, you know it's just difficult to do the engineering. I mean, mm-hmm. It's expensive and time-consuming, kind of. You know, it's, you know, nobody's going to say, "Yeah, we just we've discovered this amazing new thing, and mm-hmm. we just nobody else has thought of it before." And but you, like we're you, in space. Do you think the space elevator idea is nonsense? Or are you are you? A no, it's it's a good idea. Up? It's yeah. a good idea. The only problem is it does require vast amounts of time and money to to do it. Yeah, and it in might, our lifetime. And also, if it if it goes wrong, it might be quite. Devastating. To I the can planet. imagine that could be quite. If it fell down onto the onto the the Earth, for example, <laughs> what would you even make a space elevator out of? Well, people want to make it carbon out of carbon nanotubes, carbon right? Nanotubes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, that's, so that's that's the solution to all our problems. Isn't that the solution <laughs> to everything? It's yeah. like I got this wild new technology. What we make it out of? I don't know. Carbon nanotubes. <laughs> yeah. Like there's just a big exactly. place where you find them. <laughs> yeah. It always makes it, it sound like Lego as well. Yeah. We're just sticking together. Yeah. Right? That's it. Carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes. Of course. All right. Carbon nanotubes. Can you make cake in space? Can I eat cake in space? You can eat cake in space. Yes. So you can bring cake with you and eat cake in space. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, can you make cake? I guess you can make cake. I don't know how you make it rise. So I don't know how it would work. I mean, you're making bubbles. So yeah. I guess it would rise in all directions. So maybe so it would be really good. Because would it be like a cake ball? Yeah. Spherical cake. Yeah. And also, it would never sag. Because it's got no gravity. So actually, I reckon cake in space would be Ultimate the best cake sponge. ever. I'm so glad I asked that question. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, a, that's a, a great question. question. For a better answer well, but, but than Maybe that. cake is quite a good food to, to bring up because, mm. I mean, it's high in calories. Mm-hmm. It's not especially heavy. It is delicious. And it's delicious. <laughs> Right, and it's all about weight when, in terms of if we're taking things up in yep, rockets, yeah, right? That's right. So maybe cake is the answer. Mm-hmm. I mean, so we have to, you know, if you go to Mars or the moon, you have to grow your own food to some extent. Yeah. Maybe not on the moon. Grow your own but cake, you, you say. Well, yeah. it hasn't, that, that's, that's already happened, though, haven't they? On the International Space Station, they grew some vegetables and yep. ate them, space vegetables. Yeah, they were kind of tiny. but well, you know, you've got to start somewhere. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's uh, that's actually all the questions that we've got as well. <laughs> Have you got any more follow-up questions, Cam? No, I think I think I understand everything there is to know about cake and space and lots of other important topics too. And that was the last question for this first Q and A session for Space Explorers with Matt. Thank you very much yeah, for answering all those and indulging all these questions about. No, it's fun. It's good and mine as well. Uh, next time we're going to be having uh, Dr. Manish Patel come on, who's going to be playing space engineers. Uh, and Matt, you know Manish personally. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Manish is in my university. He um, he's a, a Martian like me, so he nice. he's studying Mars. In fact, he's the leader of an instrument on the Trace Gas Orbiter mm-hmm. uh, satellite, which is going around Mars now. Just uh, just got into orbit a few weeks wow. ago. Yeah. Good so job. he's the head honcho there, and that is a really cool instrument. It looks at the atmosphere, mm-hmm. and it tries to detect um, the concentration of gases mm-hmm. that are present at very tiny, tiny amounts, okay. trace gases. Yeah. So um, the cool thing about that is uh, methane. Mm-hmm. So um, the instrument that he works on is called Nomad, and that will uh, hopefully tell us about the amount of methane. And of course, methane could be produced by life. So if you find lots of interesting results on methane... He could be the man. He could be the man, He yeah. could be the man that takes those first steps into finding life on Mars. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Awesome. And uh, he's going to be playing Space and Engineers with us, which is a sandbox game all about sort of building spaceships and, and traveling to planets and uh, Absolutely finding resources his, to survive. Things he should know a lot about. Yes, he yep. should do. So I'm we're sure going to be playing that with him. Analyzing gases. There must be some analyzing yes. gases in that game. Absolutely. So Manish will be in his element. So if you have any questions for Manish, he's going to be on next... Uh, please add them to the comments below this video yeah. if you want to ask him anything about the gases in space, anything about Nomad, about getting a, uh, an orbiter around Mars, oh, anything yeah, yeah. like How that. How do you make something orbit around Mars in the way, in the, in the best way without it yes. crashing into the surface? Manish will be the man to answer those questions. Yes. So, yeah, all those types of questions for mm-hmm. Manish, but mm-hmm. that's not the only questions we want in the no, comments we box. Want more. Because we're actually going to do the next two episodes, we're going to film them back to back because of schedule reasons. But it does mean that we need questions for episode three in the comments box of this video too. Yes. Now, episode three, we're going to be interviewing Beth Healy, and she is basically a, a doctor of extreme like science medicine. She she yes. she goes she spends a lot of time actually in the South Pole. Yeah. Um, for like six months where it's just dark, and studies how people survive in these extreme conditions. Mm-hmm. So she, if you have any questions about how the human body copes in 
in space or how to survive in space or even what it's like to spend six months in the South the Pole, dark. you know, surrounded by uh, elephant seals or whatever else they find. What, what, what did you get in the South <laughs> Pole? Penguins. 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 And then, no, it's not elephant seals. It's what's this like a really kind of dangerous sea mammal that you find at the South Pole. Uh, leopard seals. It's leopard seals. <laughs> of course, That's what it but is. they eat the penguins. Yes. They do eat the penguins, yeah. but they're also pretty aggressive. Well, I mean, yeah. we can ask, ask Beth. Those yeah, exactly. Beth will know. <laughs> How dangerous are leopard seals? Do you That's get leopard seals in space? Yeah. Can I can so, I have that as my question? You can. Yes. yes. That's okay. my question. How dangerous are leopard seals? Okay. okay well, if that so. if that's your one for Beth, is there a, is there a, like a really tricky question that you'd like to oh, pose yeah. to Manish? Something that you know is so really going to grill his brain. His weakness. Does he have a weakness? Oh, ask him about geology. Ask him about okay. geology. <laughs> Matt says, what is a rock? Yeah. Yeah. What is Mars made of? Yes. So, yeah. Perfect. All right, we've got to basically tight, right? make sure that you've got uh, all those questions added to the comments underneath this video uh, for Dr. Beth Healy and for Manish Patel. And yes. don't forget to come back for episode two of Space Explorers, where we're going to be playing Space Engineers. <laughs>